If you're a student, note-taking apps are gonna of course be important. And so I've tried and tested a few apps so you don't have to. And here's what I found. I've tested Apple Notes, Good Notes, Notability, Word, and Google Docs as note-taking apps. And what I've mainly found is each of these apps has different capabilities and these different capabilities might link up better with what you're looking for and your learning method. So the first question you should ask yourself is, do you like to write notes out with a pen or do you prefer to type your notes? And if you prefer to write out your notes with a pen, I really recommend getting the Apple Pencil. I think it'll absolutely change your iPad experience. Notability and Good Notes, I think are two of the most popular note-taking apps. And I've tried them both and I found that I really prefer Notability. So I think Notability and Good Notes are both really good options, but I just found the user experience to be 10 times better on Notability than on Good Notes. For me, I find it so much easier to change between the different highlighter tool, the pen tool, the eraser tool, as opposed to on Good Notes. They both have a toolbar, but I feel like the toolbar on Notability is just a lot better than the toolbar on Good Notes. And the toolbar on Notability has more options in the same little sphere. So if you wanna change the color, you just click one button and you can access all of the colors. You can also find your own color schemes that you prefer. And I believe you can do this as well on GoodNotes, but they only give you three options really at the top bar that you can sort of switch between. And it's just an extra step to change one of these colors. I just found that annoying. I didn't prefer that. And I just found the user experience overall and notability to be better. Recently, Notability has changed and has allowed you to customize your templates a bit more. And actually, this was the main reason that I wanted to try Good Notes. It just seemed like you had a lot more options to customize your notes with and like make them look prettier, or organize them better. And I really wanted to do that. So when I got on Good Notes, that was one of the first things I did and I was trying to figure that out. But then Notability came out with an update that lets you do almost the same thing. I will say that the organization on Notability is not my favorite. So with Notability, you have dividers and you can insert different subjects into it. But I found this is a little bit too simple and I prefer the organization on GoodNotes. So on GoodNotes, you can have folders, you can have quick notes, you can have notebooks. It's, it's just a lot nicer and easier to really understand what it is you're looking at. While on Notability, you just have basically like one option. You can have it in a subject, but I'm still trying and testing out each of them as they change and evolve. So I will keep you updated and posted, but so far Notability is still the best app in my opinion. If you prefer to type your notes, I've tried Apple Notes, Google Docs, and Word. I found Google Docs the easiest to organize your information and to access it on different platforms, but I find the customization and all the tools extra on Word to be so much better, especially for bigger projects and more important projects. And I find Apple Notes, the app that just shows up on the iPad as a standard. It's a good app, but I prefer to just put like personal notes on there or like if I have a to-do list that I wanna get done, I just put that on there. And I don't really like to do schoolwork on there. So I use Apple Notes just mainly for ideas and you can use it also with the Apple Pencil, but I just don't find it super great as a tool for students. I do think that if you're using the iPad as a student, I think one of the best things that you can do is to get the Apple Pencil because this is one of the things that makes the iPad really different from just using a laptop and it really makes it stand out. Being able to annotate your notes with your handwriting and do a lot of the hands-on work that you would normally do on a sheet of paper, but with 10 times the capacity using an iPad, I think is really incredible. And that being said, it's also been shown that handwriting your notes as opposed to typing them is meant to be more effective and it helps you retain the information better. According to the study, Taking notes by hand may improve how students encode material, which just means how you're absorbing your material, and result in higher quality external storage used by students when studying for quizzes. Taking notes by hand may improve your capacity to understand material and to get higher test scores in the end. And I think that's a really big goal for a lot of students. So if the iPad can help you with that, I think it's an excellent resource. So moving on from note-taking app, I think the iPad is an excellent resource to help you learn things and learn them better. And a resource that I often use on YouTube before is Khan Academy, but what I really recommend doing is downloading the Khan Academy app. Downloading the Khan Academy app specifically helps you reduce distractions because on YouTube, the whole point is that you're gonna stay on the app longer and that you're gonna stay and watch more videos for a longer time. Of course, that's great when you're trying to study things, but if you have videos that are more entertaining and that are gonna distract you from studying, it can be a bit disruptive in your flow. So downloading the Khan Academy app can be excellent and it also helps you track your progress as you go through different courses, which I find really helpful. And it's also a great resource to use when studying for the MCAT. So if you're a pre-med, use the Khan Academy app. 
I love to find tools that help me stay on track and avoid distractions. So another tool that you can use is Forest. Forest is a Pomodoro app that grows a tree in your forest as you go through the timer and study. So at the end of your Pomodoro app, you're gonna have grown a tree. And the cool thing about that is if you use the deep focus mode, it means that you're gonna stay only on the Pomodoro app and you're not gonna use other apps, which I find an excellent thing to do when you're using your phone. When you're using the iPad, I think it's also really great, but I would take it out of deep focus mode because you're not gonna be able to exit out of the app without canceling the timer and killing your tree. You can also connect with other friends while you're doing this. So it's really great to uh, kind of promote community and uh, be able to focus on the task at hand. Something that I've noticed that is super cool is that a lot more students that are in college are also having side projects, which can be either starting a business or a YouTube channel or an Instagram account or a Pinterest account or whatever, just to document your journey. But also a lot of people like to do this just to share different tips and I've seen this become a trend more and more. So something that I think the iPad is great for is for these creative projects. And the first app I wanna to recommend to you for creative projects is Procreate. So Procreate is an excellent tool on the iPad. It lets you design different things with the Apple Pencil. So if you like to sketch, if you like to draw, if you like to do anything with digital art, I really recommend Procreate. And if you wanna make a YouTube channel, an Instagram or Pinterest or anything that's showing more pictures than words, I really recommend Procreate because you can design a lot of really cool things on it. It has a lot of capacity and I actually recommend watching a tutorial on how to use it so that you can really get the most out of it. At least that's what I did because at first I was just playing around with it and I didn't understand the difference between layers and locking the layers and which is the best brush to use and all this and that. And so I ended up making my preferences after I watched a tutorial. <laughs> so I recommend it. Um, I use it a lot of times to make thumbnails or to just design different things effects wise. So if I want to make a little GIF or something like that, you can make that on Procreate that I did with my handwriting. So I, I really like that. I think that's an awesome tool that you can use. And if you're looking to just get back into drawing or to start drawing or learning all these different things, I think it's excellent to do that as well. The second app I want to recommend to you is Adobe Express. So this is comparable to Canva if you've ever tried to design anything for a club or just for yourself or for your Instagram account or whatever. It's basically a tool that you can design graphics on. Again, if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or an Instagram account or any of these sort of things, it's one of my favorite things to do this with because it's really easy to use. And besides that, I really like the graphics that come out of it. There's a lot of capabilities with it. So you could take out the background of different images and you can superimpose them onto different pictures that you have. And I really like to be able to design using Adobe Express and I use it for a lot of my thumbnails as well. So if this is something that you're interested in, I recommend this as one of the best tools to use on the iPad. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, please leave me a comment below and let me know that you want more videos like this. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and join the community. And thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you're interested in getting weekly updates from me, sign up for the newsletter. It's free and I share my reflections for the week along with links to different podcasts and books generally around the themes of life, health, and exploration. I'll put the link in the description below and I hope to see you there. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's not enough to see her.